You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. And yeah, they both beat me up. And I went home crying. And my mum said, what's happened? And I said, I've just been beaten up by the two brothers. They lived on my estate. So she got me in a car and she gave me a bat. And she said, where'd, where'd they live there? I said, yep. Yeah. She stopped outside. She went, get out of the car, go and knock on the door. And he just beat the life out of me. So I had to grab him and I beat him. And I got disqualified, um, got banned for a year in amateur boxing. I think I was the only first one to bite someone. She must have sucked a good dick. Fuck. Fuck sick, Love was just blind. Ended up turning to booze and drugs. And we're still fighting to try and get the money for that. To try and turn my life around. I wanted to turn my life around. I wanted, I wanted the money, but it wasn't. It was just a vicious circle. I was making money, to spend money, to drink money and sniff money. Working for drug dealers, they've ended up killing one geezer. I've ended up driving a motor, doing runs when I was younger and pulled up and some geezer opened the car door and he went like that down the back of the seat, pulled out a gun. I was like, fucking hell, what's happening here? I do a video. Hey, what's happening? How are we doing? Smiling. Have a great day, people. Bye bye. Put the phone down. I'll cry on my own. I'll cry. <sighs> and, um, yeah, I took a load of pills. <laughs> you get to that stern stage where you don't want to be. I don't, I don't mean to like get upset, but I've been there and it does, it does really get on where you're just doing the same things. I just want people to listen. Boom, we're on. Today's guest, we've got Chaza. How are you, James, brother? James, how are you, mate? It's a pleasure. Good to see you. Good to see you, buddy. Looking well. You, yeah, you, Looks you. like you've been on all day, not me. I know, you've got some colour. <laughs> Mad story, Chaza. You know yourself. You're one of the yeah. boys. Party scene. Your boxing career. Bare knuckle boxing. You battled with your own depression. Good friends with my boy, Dapper. Yeah. But a roller coaster. But a lot of people can relate to these podcasts because I think a lot of people have kind of been in that same boat. Try to make everybody laugh. Drink, drugs pretending to be something that we're not but glad to have you on brother it's been a long time coming thank you so much i'm um, glad to be on just to express and tell my story for the real people out there you know the people that have are at the bottom and that go through mad stuff and they're just normal people working class and that, that that's all i want to do is just show that if i can do it anybody can do it i always go back to the start of my guests where you grew up and how it all began Grew up on a council estate. Um, I moved in with my nan on the estate when I was free. Lived there. It was a rough estate. Um, you had to fight way to the top in that estate. Um, there was nothing given to you. Got bullied as a kid. Coming through. Well, I, sorry, let me. I got kicked out of junior school. What for? Um, arguing with a teacher and then I kicked him in the shins um, told him to F off just a little I was just a little tear away um, then yeah I, I went to high school I got kicked out of high school so I've got no education whatsoever regret it now always the funny kid always the cr classroom clown um, and my dad always said to me if you want to be a man and you don't want to go to school, then go and get a job. And I was 14. So I found myself a job. It was either that or go to a naughty school. Um, it was called the Collinsby Centre, where the naughty kids go. So I went and got a job. And right, it's right. Um, I had to pay my dad half my wages for rent. 
I think I was on 12 pound a day. So I had to give half of that to me old man. Um, made me the person I am today. What was it like getting bullied? How did that affect you from then to now? It was horrible. I hated it. You know, I used to wear shoes too big for me. Everyone used to call me flipper foot. My old man's Dr. Martins. Um, so I used to yeah, always get bullied. And then I, um, I remember coming home one day across the field. We still had a field. And um, two brothers, they sat on a wall and they waited for me to come. And I knew it, it was every day they was doing it screaming and shouting, abusing, slapping me around the head. And yeah, they both beat me up. And I went home crying. And my mum said, what's happened? And I said, I've just been beaten up by the two brothers. They lived on my estate. So she got me in a car and she gave me a bat. And she said, where where they live there? I said, yeah. And she stopped outside. She went, get out of the car, go and knock on the door. She went, do them one by one. And my mum's a bit, Old school, and I had no choice. I didn't want to. I was scared. I knocked on the door, and damn, my mum stood the door. I never forget it. And I just stood there and said, "Where's your, where's your boys? They've just beat me up. I want to fight them one on one." She said, "Put the back down." So I put the back down. And the two boys come out, and the mum come back to the door while the boys were standing there. And she was like, "Are you sure you want to do this?" And I was like, "Not really." I said, "But I've got to." My mum's told me to. She was like, "Go back and give this to your mum," and she gave me a leaflet to a boxing gym. So I went back in the car and I said, that mum, just give me this leaflet. Um, they don't want to fight. I made it out as if they didn't want to fight, but it was me really that didn't want to fight. Um, but I was thinking I had to do it. And that was that. I went to the boxing gym and fell in love with boxing at a young age and become good at it. How did you feel your first sparring session? Can you remember? Yeah, I can it was a fact where the, the anger, everything as a young kid, by getting bullied growing up and getting the verbal abuse at school and always trying to please everyone. And that day you spar and it was just like, yeah, and you just let your aggression out. Obviously I wasn't good, um, but the buzz to actually release it was just amazing. Yeah, that's a lot, a lot of weight off me. People get bullied and scared. I believe a lot of people who fight, in fact, probably everybody who fights, is, they fight because of fear. They fight because of the pain of the past or what they've been through. And, and holding that kind of, I don't know what it is, man, like, <clears throat> that buzz, the feeling of accomplishment, the feeling of you feel you're a man. After, and listen, man, you don't need to fight to be a man, but it's that feeling that, that those chemicals whatever it is after you've had a scrap with somebody that just makes you feel fuck me like i feel alive but you only feel alive maybe half an hour 10 yeah. minutes and then that kind of goes and then you're in pain did you, <laughs> yeah, did you start craving the buzz for that i just yeah i just i fell in love with it and i felt it was just a massive release and i become good at it um and it was the, as well james it was people knowing people knowing that Oh, he can throw he can throw a couple of punches here, and it was after the people started stepping back and leaving me alone. You know, it wasn't the fact that I really I did fall in love with the sport. I'm not saying I never, but at the start it was more go there to learn to defend myself, and I was seeing people stepping back and not really abusing me anymore, and not really trying to bully me anymore because they the bullies were going to get bullied eventually because they knew. If you know someone's a, a boxer, you're going to think twice before... Yeah, picking on them. Picking on them. Did you ever get revenge on the bullies? Yeah, yeah. When them, I bashed them up later on when I was 17. How'd that make you feel? I was still young and still stupid. And yeah, I felt good. I felt like, yeah, fuck you. Now he's laughing. What was it like getting your first amateur fight? Buzzing. I was in, um, I had a great amateur career, James. Um, I had 50 fights as an amateur. I lost 12. Um, got to the ABA finals. I lost to Tony Doherty, Patrick Doherty's brother. Good fight, yeah. Great fighter. Great pro. Uh, he won the ABAs. Um, 
schoolboy champion, um, nationals. I won a lot of titles as amateur. Um, but yeah, the, the, I just I love them small hall close fights. You know, smell of cigarettes in the crowd, all the drunken old men, dads versus dads screaming and shouting. It was you, you can't get them days back. Mm -hmm. After your first fight, like, did you win? Yeah, I won, yeah. And what, did you ever have that nerves when you were getting bullied to then go on your first fight or was it totally different? Totally different, totally different. I'd learned my trade and I knew what I could do. And confident? I was confident. Yeah, I was really confident and I was, I was different in the amateurs. I was a little chubby kid and I was just hustle bustle when I was just going there for a fight, you know. Um, it was great. I remember I got a box for London, represented London. I don't know if you remember Lewis Cadman, mm -hmm. Danny Cadman. They was great. I boxed the Cadman, um, Danny Cadman. He was the England captain, and I boxed him in the London ABAs. I'm not too sure if it was the semis. And they said, "Chaz, pull out the fight. He's too good for you." He was a great boxer box for England and everything and he just beat the life out of me so I had to grab him and I beat him and I got disqualified um, got banned for a year in amateur boxing I think I was the only first one to bite someone they they all jumped in the ring was trying to attack me they had to put me in the changing room anyway about a year and a half later I got to the semi-finals again in the ABAs and they said you've got Cadman again let's go we just drop it out I said no way I'm here and I was losing the fight, second round, as the ref said break, I just thought, shut my eyes, I went boom with a left hook, caught him on the chin, St. John's ambulance had to come in and take care of him, and yeah, uproar, uproar. And then um, I ended up getting called up for to fight for England. And we went to the airport, and my trainer in my gym used to represent the England squad. And I see him at the desk, and he was talking. Long story, and he's come back, and I said, what's this? He said, look, whoever was representing your weight didn't want to take this fight, so we've called you up. I said, so I'm just a sub. I'm just someone you're going to call up. He said, look, I, did, I didn't want to tell you, Chaz, but yeah, we, we have to get your ticket now. Uh, the geezer you're fighting is Italian. He's unbeaten. He's mustered. And the fella that was in your place didn't want to take the fight. He said, look, you, you train at my gym. It's up to you what you want to do. And I, just, I said, fuck it, I'm here. Win, lose or draw, I'm representing England. I went out there and beat him. Went out there and beat him. I, I had to be on, on, on my game. And then I started screaming and shouting, I've fucking done it. You lot told me I couldn't do it. He was mustard, I'm mustard. And then... um. I said about England. I said, now I'm fighting for England. I said, the other fella didn't want it. I said, I've took it and won. And they said, well, we can't do that. And then I'll just turn over with uh, Kelly Maloney. Frank. Yeah, Frankie boy. Frankie boy, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> How was that then? Like, going through the amateur careers, how was that as well? That when you bit that person, why did you do that? Frustration. And I knew I weren't going to win. Did part of you feel as if you were getting bullied again? It come back as if... I couldn't get to him, couldn't get past his jab. He was just too good. When I got close, it was frustration. It was like, ah, instead of losing, it was just, yeah, just, it's in the back of your head all the time. I still think about it now, you know. I still go out and you'll get, in, in Croydon where I'm from, you know, you'll get people come up to you, give me, give, give me a pound for a bus or give me this, give me a cigarette. And that still comes back to you. I'm like, not like I'm a, I'm scared, but I'm like, sorry, I haven't, I haven't got it. And they're like, let me, let me see. I'm like, sorry, look, just leave me alone. Even though I can have a fight, but I'm still off looking like I'm scared. Because it's still, it scars you for life. You know, it's no matter who you are. What was it like turning pro? A great buzz. A great buzz, you know. I grew up with the likes of Kevin Mitchell. Um, Another good guy, show out with Kev. Big up Kev, yeah, he's, he's a great guy. We was in the same camp together, uh, trained together. There's a few of us. 
it was just a buzz. It was like, right, my ambition was to be a world champion. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to set my mum and dad up. I wanted to... I weren't really doing it for me. I was doing it to better. I'm, like I said to you earlier, I'm still on my cancer state. Look, I want to get off. Things take time. My sister's just gone. My mum and dad's gone. But back in the days, I wanted to get them gone. I wanted to make that money. I wanted to go, there you go, mum. There you go, get out. Because it ain't a nice place. You were 12 and all? Did you go 12 and all? I mean, 12 and all, yeah, 12 and all. Mm-hmm. And you must have been thinking. I thought I was, un- I thought I was unstoppable. I thought I was unstoppable, 12 and all. And then, um, this is, this is, oh, thank, I don't give a fuck. I remember being in the toilets at an ex-boxers association. And it was Alan Minter who fought Marvin Hagler. Mm-hmm. And he was standing next to me and I said, fucking hell, all right, Al. And he went, all right, Chaz. I said, your son's in line to fight me next, Ross Minter. And he said, you're too dangerous. I never know what Chaz is going to turn up. Because if I trained James, I was dangerous. But I started getting to that stage later on in my pro career where... I thought I was too good. I was taking, I weren't training properly. I was taking a step back and it was always like, yeah, I've been to the gym. I used to yeah, throw my trainer out. I've just been for a 5K run when I hadn't because I thought I was too good and it got to my head. And he said, my son won't fight. You're too dangerous. Never know what one's going to turn up. And then before you know it, et cetera, et cetera, I'd been on holiday and I'd come back because they told me they couldn't get me a fight for the Southern Area title and it was a two weeks notice Frank Maloney Frank Warren and they said um, take the fight I said, never in a million years I said I've got over a stone to lose um, I'm the champion you can't tell me I've got to take the fight and they said listen if you don't take the fight you have to go to Germany and get a boxing license we'll ruin your whole fucking career and they offered me, I think I was the most paid. I got seven grand for a seven area title. It was big money back in them days. Um, they offered me five. I said, no. I said, fuck it, I'll go Germany. And they phoned me back. They said, there's seven grand. Take the fucking fight now. Don't, don't cause a scene. <clears throat> so, yeah, I had to take the fight. And money was good. But, um, yeah, he hit the referee stopped it in the third. I think I got to the third. <clears throat> Another good fight. I knew I weren't fit. I knew I didn't train. I was overweight. I was more concentrating on losing the weight. How was that feeling? First professional loss. I fucked off. That's when I went. That's when I self destruct. Yeah, it was. It was crazy. I ended up booking a flight and going to Greece. Done a summer out there. Drunk, drunk every day. Let myself go. Come back. Thought I'd give it another shot, but my mind was just. When I got that first loss, you know, my mind was just never always on it. I was doing it for the wrong reasons. I was doing it instead of going to get a job or giving it 100%. I was always doing it half-hearted and to nick the money. Um, I knew I could have a fight. I done I done well as a pro, but there's regrets there, you know. There's always regrets. Were you drinking or taking gear before? In your 12... On your Before 12, the 12, no. Street. Nah, focused, dedicated. Focus, dedicated. This two is like getting to my head. Um, I remember going to a, a fight. I was in a hotel, as you do, and getting on the gear and drinking. And it was a Friday. I was fighting on a Saturday at your call. And I ended up getting my boxing bag, going to your call, knocking the fella out in the second round. Going back to the hotel and everyone was still there. Carried on snipping. Like I didn't get a drugs test, you know, because it was random back then for a piss test. And I took the gamble. I just thought I was better than what I was and I just let everything slowly creep up on me. What did you do after that? Was that your last fight? No, no. I uh, I had a long break. I, had a, I think I had about 16 fights and I just weren't right. Um, I think I must have lost about four then. <clears throat> and then... Um, Why do you think that loss threw you off? 
I guess it was the fact where I never won and if I needed to win, but I didn't get that right preparation time or that right call. Everything just come on top. I thought I was unstoppable, unbeatable, you know, 12 wins, you know, I've got girls around me. I'm in the local, where I am, household name, I'm in the papers every week and Southern Area champion. You know, I was I was going to fight Kilbrook um, for the British title. Matthew Hatton, I got called up for that fight and I accepted and that, did, that didn't happen on his behalf in Manchester. Um, I just thought I was better than what I was, J-Mo, and it all got to me and getting mixed up in that life, that life where you think they're your friends and they're not. They want to be around you for the hype. Who's buying the drugs this Saturday? <laughs> Don't worry about that. Chaz, Chaz will have a load. Who's paying for the hotels this Saturday? Yeah, Chaz has got a room. Who's paying for these round of drinks? Yeah, Chaz will get that. Even though I weren't on much money, it was like a reputation I had to... Because I wanted him to... Think you were the big man. Think that I was saying that I won't. Mm -hmm. Thinking I've got money when I never. Thinking that I'm this someone when I'm not. Yeah. See, after your 16 fights, like how much does it then now, especially, like play a massive part in your mind? Your mum and dad's not here, your sister, your brother. You're going out with these thoughts after your first one that you're going to be world champion. You're going to get them out of the state. And the fact that you, you started hitting a wobble and then you, your dreams, everything shatters, and then you look back, like hindsight's always a wonderful thing, mm. but you look back and think, fuck, one loss is fuck all. It's a case of, right, knuckle down, get rid of all the losers, but it's it's difficult. We can say this now because we know, as you get a bit older and wiser, you realise, wait a minute, they're just fucking leeches, mm. but how hard is it now to think back the potential that you did have to then follow those dreams? Because you, you feel... It's mad life because it's not only letting yourself down, but you probably, because you're, I can already see you're a sensitive guy that you feel as if you've let your mum and dad down as well. I've let, I feel like I let a lot of people down. Um, my life just took a turn for the worse. And I just, yeah, I just felt like a lot. Let, I always, I'm always caring. I'm always, got a big heart and always worry about, I always make sure you're eating before I'm eating. You're happy. If you're smiling, I'm happy. But I'm always, yeah, I felt, yeah. I just didn't want, I just wanted to be somebody. And that was my dream as a kid. And I owed that to my mum for taking me to that box of gym. And every day she used to drop me to the gym after school. And she dedicated her life to it as well, you know, for me. Um, so I owed her that. And I just wanted to be a world champion. Eventually, I would, I, very stubborn I didn't want to give up I come back to the boxing I won the southern area title again I won the British Masters title again and then I got knocked out the first time by Michael Lomax he was the prize fight champion British champion he boxed Kelbrook um, had one fight and they, I lost it on points 10 rounder and they scored it just a crazy score I thought I nicked it or it was a draw and it was crazy. It was they'd give it to him by six rounds, and then he wanted the rematch. So what I said was, obviously you know you never won that fight because you wouldn't want the rematch. You'd walk away and go on to your next fight. But I got the rematch. I went out there and I thought he can't punch. Oh, I can't beat this kid. And I, I remember coming back to the corner, and my trainer says, "Get your fucking hands up." I said, don't worry about me. I said, he can't fucking punch. I said, I'm going to I'm gonna chop him down. I said, no, I'll get him later on. I think it was the seventh round. I fucking woke up. <laughs> I woke up and he weren't even a puncher. I woke up and then it was the pride that made me stand up. I can't remember it. And then I went in the change rooms apparently and I collapsed in the changing room. Um, and then they took me off to hospital because I'd lost so much water in my brain where I lost weight. But <clears throat> yeah, and then that, that was it. That was it for me. Um, listen, we'll win, we win, we lose. Take it on the chin, this life. And then I got a phone call to fight Craig Dockey. Craig, yeah, Craig Scottish. Dockey. Scottish. I know Craig. Yeah. I boxed, you yeah, know Craig? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, fought Craig for the world title. Yeah, tough bastard. 
Yeah. I thought you'd know him. Where did I book Paisley? I think I boxed him. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking rough, man. That would have been uh, <laughs> what centres are Some like? leisure centre. Yeah. Paisley. The Blue Lagoon or something. Or something, something. Like, yeah, how yeah. small world is that? Yeah. And they called me up and they offered me a fight with Doc Eddie. Because I just got knocked out my previous fight. Hmm. And my trainer said, just stop now. I said, I'd fuck. I said, I've, I, this is all I want is that opportunity to say that I've from a kid I wanted to fight for a world title so I took the fight um, me and my trainer got on the plane we went there and I trained my heart out and I got to the scouts and I looked at Craig and I said bit podgy there Craigy boy <laughs> I said because I got knocked out my last fight I said you ain't been training have you and he said don't worry about me he said you'll go down in two or something like that and I said you think I said you're going to have a big shock mate I said watch that belly I said look at you I said you're fucked and it all had a little bit of a Barney at this weigh-in. And I said to my trainer, he, he, you know, you can see he had like saggy boobs. I said, he ain't been fucking training. My trainer <laughs> said, well, no. Nah. With your last performance, I don't think anybody needs to train. Because I always just had my hands down. <laughs> and I went out there and I beat him. And when I could come out to the ring walk, I remember the Scots were booing me. Fucking boo-boo. And obviously, I'm a fucking joker. And I was standing there and I was tongue out. And they started throwing plastic cups at me and that. And after the fight, they applauded me. They give it a draw for the world title. And when when the, one of the promoters got in the ring, I said, please don't fucking take this away from me. I said, you know I've won this fight. And he just ignored me and looked at me. And I said to my trainer, they're going to fuck me here, you know. I said, oh, we ain't brought one fan here and we've just turned him over in Scotland. And they give it a draw. And that Craig Dock, he just nodded his head like that. I said, you fucking, you lucky bastard. <laughs> you lucky bastard. And he said, fuck me, Chaz. He said, I wasn't expecting that from you. I said, I can tell. I told you to Wayne. But yeah, we spoke after and he, 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 said, he said to me, he said, fucking, you were so unlucky not to get the decision. He said, I don't know how that happened. And the Scots were booing at the end. And they was applauding me as I walked out. And I thought, well, that's nice of them. Yeah, but I think you've always got the respect for somebody because that's your nature. Like you say, it's not necessarily a people pleaser. We like to see people eating first before us or you. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm the yeah. same. I, I like to help people, but that was always my downfall for years because it never fucking got me anywhere. Now I'm ruthless. Now I don't fucking you care, man. Now it's focusing on myself and my family. So looking at that, does that not make you kick yourself that if you focused how far you could have went? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Craig Dockey, he was great fire. I was honoured to share the ring with him. Um, and the fact I never lost, I got a draw. I smile and go, he knows I nicked it. Mm -hmm. The Scots knew I won that fight. A draw's a draw, and then I, then I called it a day. I said, that's it. There's nowhere else for me to go. I got to where I wanted to get to as a kid. Um, and then I started, I met, I met, obviously I went back to Greece. That's where it started in 2005. I kept going back and back for summers, and I went back. And I met my ex missus out there, never found love. She was a waitress, so I ended up buying a bar. The police got me a bar, I ended up, I was out there for 10 years in Greece doing noise and fucking about. Got nicked a few times out there, ended up becoming mates with the old Bill out there. Cut the fellas on them out there, they was, you know, for naughty people out there, and they got me a bar out there. <laughs> And um, I had a waitress out there working for me and I've ended up sliding off and um, boom, that was that. And then I, I opened a boxing gym out there, the first ever boxing gym in Cos Cardamina in Greece. Opened that, things were good. She was sponging. I fell in love, didn't see it, I was blind. My mum told me, my sister told me, She's she's a leech. She's not you. Why are you going out with these little dolly birds that all they want is money, money? Go and get a proper girl, you know? Didn't see it. It was blind. First time I fell in love, giving her all the money, spending, going on boat trips, doing a bit of thing. She was doing thing. and It was just a spiral. Spent all my rent money doing what she wanted to do. And she said, we are... Just get a plane and I packed my stuff and got a plane and left everything. My gym, my bar, got on a plane and come back. Fell out of my mum. Why? 
because me, me mum had a row with her. She said, my mum said this or something like that. And I knew me mum and my sister didn't like her. Obviously, now I look back, I fucking when I wonder why. They see through it. Oh, I didn't because love's blind. I didn't see it. She was telling me, come with me and fuck them. And I did. And I left me mum and I was in a bad state. Went up uh, Halifax, Manchester. Yeah, she swallowed all me money. Dead to a fact where I had to go work. I started working. She was coming back on a Friday. She never worked. So holding around her and I'd just give her my money every week. Needed new nails, new hair. She must have sucked a good dick. Fuck. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> sick, Chaz. Love was just blind, you know? Yeah. And then she started going to the gym early in the mornings and found out she was cheating and over this stage, I had no one. I was on my own. I remember sitting in my car outside this house, crying my eyes out, and I phoned one of my cousins. And I was just like, I just don't know, because I knew she was seeing someone else at this gym. Do I go to the gym? Do I do something stupid to the man? And then it's all, it's Chaz again, he's fucked up. What do I do? So, yeah, I went and hired a car. Took the two TVs off the wall. Don't know why. Don't ask me why. I thought, fuck her. So I took two TV, TVs off the wall, packed my stuff. Went round to her mum's house. She was around there that day. And said, tell her, see you later. Fuck you off. She didn't know what was happening. She phoned me about half hour later. She went, I've just got indoors and the TVs ain't on the wall. Where they gone? I said, I told you. I'm gone. Fuck you. I'm off. I ain't stupid. You know, uh, that broke me out. And that's what, that was the killer, James. That was the killer, you know. And that's a lot of people out there, split ups, you know. Love, love hurts, love kills. It's painful. <sighs> Been for it? Millions, of, not millions, but a few times. It, it, I've done a lot. I, I broke a lot of hearts, but my heart's been broken a couple of times. Here you he know. goes. <laughs> so, it has, it's been, do you know what I mean? It's fucking it's, painful. And that stings you, and it's still... I still think it affects us to this day, even though, even now in relationships, like the pain's still there because we don't want to feel that pain again. So we become guarded, become cold, become distant. I'm very, I'm very, I'm very, how can I say this? I'm very now, I'm, I'm, with, I'm engaged now. Congratulations. Like, I forgot you. to say, you just got engaged last week. Last Congratulations, week. Congratulations, yeah. brother. Thank you, brother. Yeah, yeah, she's, you know, she's me world. She's a star, but it took me a while. To trust. To, and I'm still but she's the one see the girl what fucked you about would you have ever took her back because you were so vulnerable that you'd fail it with your yeah, family you'd have. lost everything took me f I've been single five years didn't want no one else but I wanted her back text her a few times you know she's text me you know she's got someone else she's text me and I was like let's meet up on the motorway halfway regret it now like when i look back now and i'm and i'm 100 you know it's a, it's this i don't know what, what i've seen in it mate honest to god um first time i found love but that's that I, I've, I've moved on took me a long while to get over it how did you find out she was cheating because she was going to the gym and i was going to work and she said about this man keeps talking to me trying to make me jealous and I said oh, right. I said do you want me to come down here and tempt to fuck off and she went no why do you always have to start I said I'm not I'm just saying if you won't leave you alone I'll come down here and say that's my missus mate drop me out she went no just just, just go work just go work and later on she started going earlier and I slipped I slipped down and I see her. I didn't do nothing I just parked up just being a little I spy and I parked up and I see her just hovering about outside the gym she went and in this car pulled up and I drove off. I drove off. I thought, I've got, I, I can't, I've got to go. So I drove. And that was that. That was then. She, she denies it, but if I would have seen it, I don't know what I would have done. Do you think she could have manipulated you to say anything she wanted unless you've seen it with your own eyes and you would have believed that? Yeah. She still was after and she still denied it she's ended up moving on now and whatnot but 
yeah, loves blind. And what did you do after that? I drove home. Um, I drove home. I ended up living in a caravan. Went back fighting. Um, ended up turning to booze and drugs. And we're still fighting to try and get the money for that. To try and turn my life around. I wanted to turn my life around. I wanted I wanted the money, but it wasn't. It was just a vicious circle. I was making money, to spend money, to drink money and sniff money. Do you, do you know what I mean? And I'm like, I'm skinny again. I've got to get a fight. Um, I've ended up, James, I've ended up, I'm that likeable, funny fella. I've ended up working for drug dealers. They've ended up killing one geezer. I've ended up driving a motor, doing runs when I was younger and pulled up and some geezer opened the car door and he went like that down the back of the seat and pulled out a gun. I was like, fucking hell, what's happening here? They used to give me money, sponsor me for the boxing and then they was giving me half ounces of sniff and yeah, I'll take that this week and sell that. That's a bit of sponsor money. That's on me and I wasn't selling it. I was sniffing it. Vicious circle, vicious circle. Life's been hard and cruel but only on my own mistakes. Yeah, it comes a point you've got to kind of take responsibility. You've got to take responsibility because you're your own person and yeah. you can change only you can do what you... No one's... Everyone's... All right, people are like, go on, Chazza. It pushes you, but it's only you that say, yeah, go on. You know, all these people that go around saying, I'm not addicted, I can go out and I can just have a little couple of bumps. So, so, so did I. I used to go out and have a couple of bumps until the stage where you're locked in your room. You know, she calls me fucking mental health problems. You know, the stages where I was doing all that, I would lock myself in the room. Um, I'd do a video. Hey, what's happening? How are we doing? Smiling. Have a great day, people. Blah, blah. Put the phone down. I'll cry on my own. I'll cry. And I'll phone a man who's come around and give me a bit of gear. To the stage where <clears throat> I, was, I was an addict and I didn't want to be here. It was all fake. And I was doing it just for social media. That's what it really silly where it come from. I had my own scaffold firm. <sighs> Lost it all. Lost it all. Because I thought it was clever. On Wikipedia, like I said earlier, they got me as the world's hardest scaffolder. And I'm not proud of it. You know, these videos people making, I'm putting on YouTube of me driving. Do, I, I do pack it and fly, don't drink and drive. Pulling scaffolds over. Um doing mad stuff on the scaffold and health and safety stopped me from getting a job. I can go to prison and get put into work. I couldn't get work. I remember going for a job interview, tried to get work and I walked in the room and these people was on a job interview all looked at me and I thought, fuck, they know I am. But I didn't realise how big I was getting from just doing Snapchat at work. I just thought it was a laugh. And then one of them was like, said, Oh, God, Arsha, can I have a picture, mate? You're the world's hardest scaffolder. And I'm like, mate, fucking shush, mate. I need this job. The man's walked out of the office. He's come back in. He said, Chaz, I didn't realise there's an email from Health and Safety. We can't employ you. I said, you fucking joking? I was like, I'm good at my job. They said, no doubt, but you're, da you're dangerous, mate. You're all over social media. You're on YouTube, Wikipedia. There's no way we could employ you. We're a proper company, like. Health and safety would just shut us down. What are you doing, snorting gear on a job? Yeah. <laughs> I remember going, I remember doing a video, working nine till five, Dolly Part, and I was in my man, Keeney. I got in the shower at five o'clock in the morning. I don't think I slept all the night before. Next to a can of Stella. Done some gear on my side, videoed myself, turned up at the work, it was freezing cold, in the man, Keeney. Got a load of scaffold shoes on my shoulder, walked up the ladder. Within about three minutes, the phone rang one of the supervisors and said, tell that Chaz, he's sacked. We've just seen his social media, sipping coke, drinking at five in the morning before he's even turned up for work. And then he turns up in a mankini and runs up the ladder. So I used to think it was funny because I used to try and please people on the social media. 
that's what it was. Yeah, because it's, views and likes numbs numbs the pain as well for a short period of a time. It does like getting that self getting that attention and thinking people you're amazing. He's funny. He's this and that, but. It's all the act of a clown in it. It's just it's just a clown and people just wanted to see you ruin your life. Because that's all you're doing is going down the pan and they thought it was funny. And then um I got to the stage where enough was enough. I didn't really know where to turn anymore. I didn't want to do it anymore, that's for sure. Didn't wanna I wanted to turn my life around, but I'd got too deep. I was this scaffolder and I was this party animal and I was this funny go lucky that everyone thought, don't give a fuck, wild, crazy. And I won't, I was hurting inside. I was. To the fact where I was locking myself in my room and doing drugs and not wanting to go out, wouldn't answer the phone and it just just come on top and I went to touch it. I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to take it, but I, I just didn't want to be here anymore. I just wanted to take my life. I didn't want to be here. Where was I going? I wasn't going nowhere. I was just well if I wouldn't have overdosed on cocaine, you know. I just didn't want to be here. And it breaks my heart now to think about it and I suppose that's why I'm passionate and I don't want to do it anymore. I never never do it going down that road. Um, it was hard you know obviously I lost my brother and I didn't want to put my mum or my dad through that pain again and um, yeah I took a load of pills and I don't know what happened Saying was just like, what are you doing? And I just thought it was too late. And I was just laying there on the bed. And I ended up just calling an ambulance. I don't know, something come over me. And I called myself an ambulance. And then I remember I opened the door and the ambulance driver was like, what the fuck? And he was like, what have you taken? And I was like, 12 grams of cocaine. I've been up for three days. And they took me off I had a couple of days in hospital <coughs> and um, they just said how you're still alive we don't know um, I had heart palpitations or something else wrong with my heart and they said if you touch it again you'll be dead so I just I went straight on social media and I just told everyone out, I'm done. This is not for me. I'm here. I'm lucky to be here. I'm out. And I remember I remember in the car on the way home and I'd done it on social media. And I let everyone know and I said, it's over. There's no more. There's no more of this, you know, drugs and just let, just, just for the laughter. Because it nearly killed me, just for the likes and for everyone to laugh and go, he's funny, that geezer. He's funny, but I wanted to take my life. I didn't want to be here. It was all fake. And I decided I was going to turn my life around and change, and I didn't want to put people through any more misery, especially my close ones. And I did. <clears throat> I did. I've, uh, it's been a long road. <laughs> It's been a very long road. And what I do on social media now is I show my ups and I show my downs. You know, we're not perfect. No one is perfect. I still drink. But the the, 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 the other stuff, <laughs> I suppose sometimes it it needs, you need to, you need to experience something like that to say a lot of people can't, drink because it goes together in hand in hand yeah i can't drink <clears throat> a lot of people say to me how can you drink but if you you didn't want to be here no more because of that shit then and you've been advised and you've been in a hospital on a bed and you've cried to yourself at night and you've took all these tablets because you didn't want to be here because of that shit at first it started on a bump 
it got to the stage where I was locked myself in my room, all the half hours of Charlie and just sit there on my own, talking to myself. No one, no one around me, no one knowing. How hard was it when you were suicidal or nearly dead for your, your loved ones to come and see you? I just, I just took so much. Uh, everything had just got on top. And I'm very much, like I was saying, you know, it was very much smiling. Hey, how you doing? Have a great day. We love you. You can do it. Stay positive. Put that down. And then I'd be in a hole. The loved ones never knew. No one knew. No one knew. And when it was the final carton, it was the fact. I don't know why. I don't know why, why I called the ambulance. I remember laying there. And I was just like, fuck. I was waiting for my eyes to go and not wake up. Didn't I didn't want it anymore, James. I really didn't want to be there. I really didn't. It's just living. I wasn't living my life. I was living for their entertainment. You know, couldn't afford rent, and it just I just I was. It was a misery. Were you an alcoholic? Never. No, I've never been an alcoholic. I've never been an alcoholic. I like a drink. If I go out, I'll have a drink. But I can go out and not drink. That doesn't bother me. Mm. But obviously back then, it was always drugs and booze went hand in hand. I remember being in a pub and I was out of my head and I said to my mate, book me a flight. And he ended up booking me a flight. I didn't even know if I had a case. I remember getting in a taxi. I videoed myself opening a Stella at like four in the morning finishing my last bit of packet and got on the plane I got off the plane and I went up I thought it's funny I went up to the air hostess I said where am I she said Alicante I went where the fuck's Alicante she was like Spain she thought like, Benidorm's probably the closest place I went that fucking do I waited for my bag lucky enough I packed a bag I wasn't too sure if I did or not went to Benidorm and Ended up staying there for three weeks. Just, yeah, we ended up staying there. Ended up meeting someone that done a bit of graft out there. Getting on it again. And, I mean, it was just, the whole social media is just, my start is just a blur. So like now I've turned, now I've, I just want to tell my story because I suffer now with mental health. Um, I'm just normal, normal person. And we all go through this. And there's many people out there that will be watching this going, fucking hell, that's exactly the same as me. I was like that. But what I want to get across is now is if I can do it, anybody can do it. Because I've got no, you know, I'm, I'm my life's, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. And I'm positive. I still have the occasions that, I tell you, for instance, a month ago, my missus turned around and said to me, we've got to pay the last bit of this holiday. And I said, babe, I'm skin. I haven't got no money. Um, and it was about three months before that she come round because I wasn't answering the phone and I'd locked myself in my room, not doing no drugs. I just locked myself in the room suffering because I didn't, this fighting that I was doing and I got sponsor money, but I'd spent that money and now I was trying to live. I owed rent. Where do I go? What do I do? Shit, I got another day. Oh, I'm back to square one. Um... Yeah, a month ago, I couldn't, she, she's, she come around a couple of months ago, like I said to her, and I went up to the phone and she's got a key and she come around and, yeah, and that's why my missus is my best friend, my lover, I love her to bits. She, she got me out of bed and she was like, what are you doing? 
I said, I don't know. And she sat there and she didn't try and just get, you know, we was talking and it helped. It helps to talk. And we was talking and I was explaining. Um, she paid for the holiday, the last bit. But I pulled a string. I thought, fuck me. So, yeah, I've got this truck, started my new business, clearance, rubbish clearance, can't get a scaffold job, can't get a scaffold job. <clears throat> so I thought I'd try saying, just a working class boy and I've always grafted. I started this rubbish clearance, but again, uh, my old man, they give me his savings, he went, there's, there's, there's that money, go and get yourself a truck, go and fucking, you got a good girl with you. Let's get this, let's do this now, for fuck's sake. Like, you've sorted your life out all the way up to here. So he's he's helped me out. But my next fight pays for that truck, you know? And then I'm back. Then I'm back. Then I'm going to focus on my business, and I'm back. This is my last fight, and I'm out. How did you get into the bare knuckle stuff? Missed it. Missed it. Um... Missed, missed, missed the fighting and then money, money was obviously I couldn't get a job in scaffolding so I thought oh, I'll have a go at this with this company and it was it was alright good pay went out there my first one and I remember Dominic Negus you remember no Dominic Big Dom yeah, Big yeah, Dom. you know get battered in the the, the, was it the changing room or something? Somebody came in with hammers with and, an axe, and he yeah. chased them out or something. Yeah, big, big Essex boy. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I watched a documentary about him years ago. Yeah, well, he was my trainer. and um, yeah, He's a mad bastard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we've gone up to, where have we gone up to? Birmingham or somewhere. Bolton. We've got a box in Bolton in the lockdown. And then um, I said, don't worry about this fella. I said, he's got nothing on me, Dom. And I've gone out there. And he's gone, whack. He's broke my nose. Whack. He split my face. I've come back the first round. Dom went, what are you fucking doing? I said, I don't know, Dom. I said, but this fucking hurts, mate. He went, well, your nose is broke. That's for sure. I said, oh, mate. And then I lost it on a... Normally, them bare knuckle fights don't go to the end. Mm -hmm. But I went to the end, I lasted, my art took over. The third round I come back and smashed the smashed the life out of him. I got my comfort zone then, started getting a bit of hate. Lost the first round. Second round could have gone either way. Smashed the third round. And they give it to him by two rounds and they give me one. Um, but it was a great fight, learning fight. And then I come back. I've had three, four. I don't fucking know, Jay, my way it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Three of us. One, two. Lost one. Yeah. Um, Is there a big difference between the oh, gloves and a knuckle? A huge difference. Just because you're a boxer. Yeah. Listen, I've spoken to Jamie Cox, you know, a few fighters that are fighting on this BKFC. That are, that are Premier, that are the Americans. Everyone wants to fight on that. I've had a few people hating. Oh, I want to fight on on this beaker. Go and do your apprenticeship. There are certain people, like, I've, I've done it. I've done my apprenticeship. I've boxed for Southern areas. I've boxed for World Honours. I've, I've proved myself in the bare knuckle. Now I'm on the American scene. Wembley Arena, it's going to be a great show. You know, MVP versus um, Michael Venom. What's his name? Michael, Michael Venom yeah. Page. Yeah, yeah, he's a big animal, man. And yeah. There's some great fights on there. But I said to one of the boxers at fighting, I said, listen, don't think this is boxing. I said, be very aware, this fucking hurts. I said, be first, be sharp, and keep that head moving constantly. Because in boxing, you can stand there, touch, 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 touch. Touch that, you, get, you break your hand with another punch. You know, you got to be smart, try and duck your head down when he throws a jab, let him, let him hit the top of your head and break his hand. It's, it's, it's a thinking game. Don't be nervous. And ah, like, I was like that the first one. Ah, chin in the air. Relax, relax. Watch the shot, drop your head, let him break his hand on your head. The body's the one, my last opponent. 
I come back. Jason Matthews is my trainer. He knocked out Ryan Rhodes as a pro. He's a great fighter. And uh, I come back. I went, he said, what's wrong? I went, he's broke my ribs. And he said, relax, me blood clot. He said, just bust his ribs back. He's like, a Jamaican, he's so calm. He's the best ever. And I was like, is that all you got to say? He said, no more headshots, man. Just the body now. He said, and you're bust his ribs. And I went out there and I thought, right, no headshots. Made him miss. Whack, whack, whack. Broke his ribs. Stopped the fight. Come back here and see, I told you, blood. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> But, you know, all the headshots, but the bodies, you, them, the ribs just shower. How's the training for these fights? <clears throat> yeah. Well, it's, it's been it's been hard for me, this one, because the fight was on the 16th of July. And then, I was just saying, that had his stag do. I think he had his stag do on the 14th of July. So, no, before that, I can't fucking remember, James. My head's gone. But it was meant to be July and then the fight got pulled back until the 20th of August because they were sorting out the main event. So they gave me extra time. But I'd booked a week away with the missus for the 20th of July because that's where I was going to propose, where we met. So when they when it's got moved to August, I thought, fuck, I can't cancel it. I'm going to propose out there. So I trained out there, um, kept myself fit. I've got three weeks left. I'm feeling good. Listen, I'm fighting an animal. I'm just real. I know he's the nuts. I know I'm the underdog. There ain't no, no one can lie to me. I, I know I'm going in there. He's unbeaten. He's had two um, king of the streets. As anything goes, he's had two bare knuckle, one of them all. Um, 87 cage fights or something he's had. I don't even want to watch him. <laughs> I don't even want to look it. I'm not going. I was starting to get scared, mate, when you've I just been throwing about these numbers. Those king of the streets are animals, mate. I've are, seen a few of the cunts. There's a clip of him kicking someone's head clean off nearly. <laughs> as he goes down, he boots him through the face. Um, people, the promoter said, I can send you some videos. Don't bother. I don't want to see it. It is what it is. I'll turn up at night. I know I've got good ability. Keep my head moving. It's bare knuckle. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. How Listen. did your relationship with Dapper laugh start? Love Dapper, man. <laughs> that him, was mate. my boy. Love yeah, him. I love him in the bits. Yeah, we're really good mates. Um, six years ago, I come out of a club um, and I walked down the alleyway and he was standing against the wall. And these two men were going, you fucking this and fucking that. I didn't really hear what they were saying. And he was like, he's a pussy, isn't he? He was like, <laughs> <laughs> he is, he is. Sorry, Dan. And he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And they was, because he got kicked, kicked, not long after he got kicked off TV, on ITV2 for doing a joke, a homophobic joke or a gay joke. And they was calling him a fucking scumbag and just bullying him. And he was scared. I'll never forget it. He was like, all right, boys, I'm sorry. And I was like, you fucking prick. So I come out and I was walking up and I went, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't make it. I knew him. I knew he was, obviously, but it just weren't fair. So I said, boys, don't don't bully him. And one of them, they were both fucking lumps. And one of them went, what's he got to fucking do with you? I'll bully you. So that stage, I said, whack! And hit him with a left hook and knocked him out cold. And the other one came running and I knocked him out cold. The two of them out, Sparko on the floor. And Dapper went, Dapper come off the wall and he went, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, I don't. And he was like, oh, thank you, mate. Thank you. Like, blah, blah, blah. And we hit off. And then I think he texts me on social media about, about, I don't know, it must have been about two, three days later. He said, mate, have you seen what's on Twitter? I said, I don't use Twitter. He said, get on there, mate. He said, the fella's written on Twitter. You might, like, they're trying to find you. The old Bill. I went, oh, they're fucking joking, mate. So I've gone on Twitter and the geezer's put on there saying, that the last and 10 of his mates jumped me and my friend outside the club. What a fucking grass. <laughs> That's what he's put. Dapper laughs and 10 of his pounds. So that was like, just keep low, be quiet. And me being me, I couldn't give a fuck. So I read on there, 
No, no, 10 people jumped you. I'd done it on my own because you was bullying him. Bullies got bullied. And that was, yeah, I thought I was going to get nicked. That was going, mate, you're going to get nicked, mate. You've just opened up to fucking knocking two geezers out. You're going to get nicked. You crazy. Take it off. I said, nah, fuck him. I said, you ain't done it. Like they were trying to pass the butt on him. I said, you ain't taking a rap for that, mate. So they've tried to bully you. I said, oh, fuck it. I'll stand by my guns. And then nothing happened. And we just did it off. He's a funny bastard. Yeah, I love him, but it's me. But, uh, he's fucking had it all lost and now he's got it all back. Yeah, exactly. That's good, and, it, and it shows what can be done. I look at him and he inspires me so much, James. I don't look at anybody with hate. A lot of people out there see people doing something and they want to hate or talk about and try and cause them depression instead of being grateful and going, you know what, fucking great. Look at you. You're doing well now, James. You've come out and it makes me smile to go, Joe, you know what, fucking good job and all. Yeah. Good job and all. Be proud, stand tall. And it's like Danny's doing so well now. He's in the movies, um, social media pings. And I, I look at him as, yeah, one day I'll get to the top there. And I'm proud to be his friend and I'm proud of what he does. You know, he winds me up but says, I'm a millionaire. And and all that. We was on all of them. <laughs> he does. <laughs> But it's only a joke. He winds me up. He's a fucking Keiko, isn't he? Like, I've got a fucking... I've got, I've got, <laughs> and the in the drive. He does, yeah, he yeah. does. He says, what's the time with the Rolex? Yeah. Why is it ticking and not the swipe? Anyway? Yeah. You want a real one? But he's only... People take it to what? He's only messing about. I don't give a fuck. Um, his video would crack me up, man. Like, the way he talks to his dog, he speaks to him in Spanish. Like, it's so fucking silly, <laughs> mate. But I was sitting in my bed and I'm thinking, silly cunt, mate, because I think he was in, he was in his, his honeymoon there. And it was a donkey in front of his beer. And he says to the guy, why don't you, when you pass these, oh, what is it he says, when you pass these beers, says, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but it sounded, like, it sounded like a fucking donkey noise or something. And I was pissing myself, oh, he's, mate. He's funny. Because he got, he, he sold out, he sold out the O2, didn't he? The O2, our stage invasion. You, you fucking know. jumped the stage. I jumped it because he gave me a pass and he said to me, please, Chad, don't, don't fuck about, mate. I was like, well, you're not going to sit me in a crowd, are you? I said, you've got to give me a pass. So I can come backstage. you got, f like, free drinks and that in the back. He went, promise me you ain't going to. I said, well, I'm not going to. It's your night. What, what am I going to do anything for? So he was like, all right, give Chaz a pass. They give me a pass. I was out the back and that, yeah. And I brought the old man, Kenny, in my man bag, stuck it on there, jumped on there. But, um, yeah, he inspires me. He's funny. He's great. We've done some videos. We've done some great videos together. Um we're going to be doing some more, um, some real talk videos about life, um, which turn into a little bit of a sketch, comedy sketches as well. But um, He's a fucking genius as well, man. Oh, like, he's, he's so he's, great. He's, he's so great. He's, his mindset and his, his creative mind is, is fucking up there, man. Like, he does it. And if he keeps up with the comedy, because people love him because he is one of the lads. And every comedian I know, I've done stand-up comedy for about every comedian I know are fucked on the head. He is perfect for that. <laughs> he wanted me to do one. He wanted me to do a stand-up. And I went, I wouldn't know. He went, well, just, just tell a story, Chaz. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, just tell one of your stories. He went, that's fucking comedy gold. Yeah. I said, well, I'm not telling everyone that I wanked off a geezer in Thailand. <laughs> he went, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's funny, mate. See, when you, how have you managed to stay off that, Chaz? Has it been difficult? Off the gear? Yeah. Like I said to you earlier, I don't want it, mate. I don't want it. I, I've had enough of being down there. I want to be up here. I want that different life. I've, I've, I've get you so many opportunities and I'm lucky. I've always done my videos and et cetera. And I've been to these parties and guys, I know a lot of celebrities. I'm not a celebrity. I'm just a normal working class Joe Bloggs living a council flat on a council estate. I struggle day to day life. One month I might be all right, the other month I'm fucked and I can't pay rent. You know, um, I'm finally just, finally come to the top now. Finally, I reckon another year and I'll be good as long as this business keeps running the way it's running. Um, we've been going four weeks and it's going well and I want to thank everyone out there supporting it on socials. Um, I don't want it. I don't want to go back to that place. I've been there, done it seen it I thought that's just not for me and it, it was a shame that it's had to take what's happened to me and lose everything and try to take my life so if I can get a message out there tell one person 
you know, and it's so hard, it's so hard for anybody to listen and go, do you know what, he's right. Because you've got to be a man to go, fuck me, you know what, I've been, I've been having a little dabble lately, this geezer's right. What these two are talking about now, am I going to end up like that in a fucking six months time? Yes, you fucking are. So there's no, there's no going out having a bump at the weekend because it comes to an addiction and it comes to where you're going to lose someone big in your family. You're going to lose someone close to your loved one, your children you're not going to see. So I just want to get a message out there, you know, and when you're suffering with mental health, you know, it's okay to talk. Please reach out. Don't sit there and do drugs like I did and want, didn't want to be here anymore. I wish I could have spoke right. to someone. How did, you, how did you get through your tough days, Chazza? How do I get through them now? Yeah. I still have my bad days, James. I'm not going to lie. I still have my bad, not as much. Uh, thanks to like CBD, Simple. They look after me, Tom, with a bit of CBD. Keeps me all, uh, listen, if I wouldn't have abused myself back then, I probably wouldn't have needed this CBD. But it just takes the edge. It just, and I still have bad days even, you know, once a month I might have a right shit day and I might just sit there and say, fucking hell, mate, I just don't want it anymore. What the fuck? And my missus is so supportive and she knows when something's not right, she's on me. But I'm, I try and stay positive every day. I go, I run every day. I've never trained if I had trained the way I'm training now when I was a pro, you know, I'd be a world champion. Like, I do, tonight after this, I'm going back, I'm doing a 5K run, no matter what time I get back. Um, has to be done. Training in the morning, in the gym, running in the evening, work in the day. I'm non-stop. Things ain't given to people like us, you know. We're normal working class people. We ain't fortunate. We gotta make our own our own path and we gotta keep that path clear. We don't want no fucking obstacles and in the way. All them stop and starts. I've, I've been stopping and starting all my fucking life and I've had enough and I don't want it no more. I want nice holidays. I wanna be settled down with my missus. I wanna go to work and, you know, concentrating on my business and doing my acting, my films. I took myself to acting school. No one's gonna do it for you. Like I said about the acting, I know a lot of people. Tam, a lot of a lot of celebrities out there. I know a lot of people that I could say, "Oh, do us a favour." Do it. I'm not that person. Like people go, "Oh, you're lucky. You know them. You're lucky." No, because no one's giving me fuck all. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a prime example. Dapper, fuck. He texted me last night. First of all, he texted me last night, and he advanced for this, and he went, "All right, mate. What do you need me to do for you? Let me know." And I'll show you the message in a minute. And I went, fuck all. And he went, you don't want me to do anything for this up and coming fight. Promote you in it. I said, Dan, I don't want fucking nothing from you, mate. I said, you're my pal. I said, if you want to say Chaz is fighting, then you do that. But I don't personally want you to go out. I, I don't, you're my mate. I don't, I'm not in it for what I can get from you. Do you know what I mean? I don't, and he knows that. I've said that from day one. I don't want anything for nothing. With the acting, I saved up my own money and I took myself to acting school. Um, paid for it myself. Done it. Four-month intense course. Passed it. Got the paperwork. You know, he's putting me in a film. Um, I'm waiting for the script to come out. Miss Kiss. But I've done that myself. And he see me, I wasn't asking, oh, that my laughs, can you get this for me? Can you do this for me? I went and went, right, if I want to get involved in that, what they're all doing, let's go down the right path and then come back and go, took myself to college, can I have an audition? Like I would anybody on the internet. If there's a film going on, there's my paperwork there, can I have an audition? Like, I'm not getting in a film just because it's that my laughs. I'm going to go and share my stuff. and Do you think I've got a lot of pride? I've got pride. Mm -hmm. So much pride, you know? Um, but it's okay because you are well-liked and you've got a lot of friends who are successful. 
the pride can get in the way as well instead of just going you know what fuck it like, it's okay to get a little a little kick up to try and help you but I again you've got too much pride he said to me the other day he went um, about me truck starting my business let me lend you the money let's get you on the road let's get you started and set, set in this business I said no I don't want to lend money never lend money with friends because you'll fall out I said, no, I'm good. He said, Chaz, just let me get you this truck. I said, listen, I'll, I'll get the money, I'll fight and I'll save. And then I, my dad had some savings. He's 70 fucking eight. He had some savings. He went there, take my savings. He said, make sure you pay me back on a certain, certain date. I said, no problem. Got the truck. Right? And that was screaming at me. You, you're you a fucking idiot. I told you I'd lend you the money. It's good. It's it's." I got a lot of pride, like, and I'll pay my dad back after this fight. This fight, I paid for that truck. A lot of people look at you, I think, you're flying on social media. He's got his own business. He must be getting paid. No, I ain't on him. Fuck all. I'll do social media to help people out there because I don't want them to go down the path that I've been to, that I've been through. So I try and help them on that one and stay clear of that. At the same time, I try and do a bit of comedy on them and we join up and do some videos for people to make them laugh and have a better day. And it, I get satisfied from it. I get loads of messages, people telling me I've changed their life. And I won the other day, some geezers started his own business. He said, it was only from you, Chaz, how you've turned your life around. And I was just like, you know what? Well done. Keep your fucking head up. Even though it was about three weeks ago, I was fucked. My missus just paid for my holiday. Mm -hmm. And this, so I'm helping other people get their lives back together. But at the same time, I'm still trying to get my life back together. Uh, what do you think you need to do to try and elevate you to that level that you keep dreaming of? The boxing, you fucked it. You had the, the pub, they had the business in over up in, was it Cyprus? Greece. Oh, yeah, Greece. You fucked it. And then the bare knuckle, you're, you're starting to get somewhere. You've got the new van. But what do you need to then keep going forward? What do you think it is? It holds you back? <sighs> the film industry, that's what, that's what I want to get into. Um, I've always wanted it. Um, that's why I took myself to do it the right, the right road, the right route. So no one can tell me that I've been given anything because no one can throw nothing back in my face. Oh, you know them. No, fuck you. I went for an audition. People look at you. They might know that I've gone for three auditions and I ain't, I ain't passed them. But I ain't put it out there, but people are quick to judge. Do you understand? Like I've gone, I've got, I've, I've, I've applied for jobs and I've gone for auditions and I've failed. Just because they see you in one film, oh, because yeah, Chaz knows him. No, Chaz, Chaz has done my apprenticeship. I've gone to fucking school myself. Mm -hmm. So don't be quick to fucking judge people what you see. Yeah. What was this, the, the shooting you, you were talking about, the murder? With the, what happened there? That was when I was younger and I always wanted to be somebody. I always wanted to be the face. I always wanted to be as I was growing up and yeah, we was, I was mixing with the wrong people and it was the time of sponsors, drug dealers were sponsoring me and I'm too thick to fucking realize, you know, I was in nightclubs selling pills around these gangsters thinking, cause they just knew that I had bollocks. I had, a, I had an arsehole, I, I had an arsehole and I'd fight any man, not knowing, you know, um, and, that's the reason why I look back now why they wanted me round them because they knew if he's going off Chaz his game was a pebble he'd jump straight in the middle um, and I remember yeah I thought he was my mate he let me drive a car he said drive this car to so and so pub car park so I'm going to meet you there and I went alright yeah lovely I wasn't stupid I knew they used to deal with drugs and all that and I pulled in the car park the geezer's over the door he's put his hand down the back of my seat Lent down, pulled it out, and I looked. I said, you fucking winding me up, mate. He said, go on, fuck off, drive. I called, can I say, I'll, I'll come back to my pal. I said, is it meant to be my mate? I said, you just made me drive a motor. I think I was about 17 then. I've drove a motor with no license. The geez, it, one of these given me. I said, you just had a gun in a motor, mate. Well, what are you doing to me? And he said, do as you're fucking told. He said, you're working for me. He said, Do, don't be fucking telling me. Keep your mouth fucking stum. And that's when I thought, wow. You know, I'm in a bit deep here. You know, these, these boys ain't messing. 
later on down the line, you know, there was it's just been mad. I can't say too much because, but yeah, it's, it's, it was normally. Um, and I guess I just always wanted to be me, which is me now. Mm-hmm. Always living to please everybody else. Always living to be this someone you're not. And you know? I be you. Did you ever get fairy pay or anything? No. I go and speak to anybody about you. After what happened, after what happened with everything, I was always trying to be a gangster. I wanted to be with the big boys. When I started doing the social media, I first went viral from doing a video about my ex missus. And I'll never forget the video because you text me. (laughs) And I've done a video just um, saying, being comfortable. Six months into a relationship, I used to do these relationship ones because I've been through the shit. Six months in a relationship, don't get too fucking comfortable. When you get home from work or you get home from shopping, go and have a shower and wash your fanny before you get in bed with your fella and think you're going to have sex. Don't get a baby wipe and start washing it because when he goes down there, taste it. That's being six months in a relationship. Don't get too comfortable. And obviously, you see, I'm in it. Everyone's going mad. No, she never done that. Well, yeah, she fucking did. <laughs> She's on the blower straight away, you fucking horrible bastard. <laughs> But uh, that's where it started from. Then I just started talking about real relationships and mm-hmm. real life problems. Real funny. life problems. Because if you, you don't fucking laugh, Chaz, I mean, what the fuck else have we got? We've got to laugh about the problems and the pain because the funny thing is, man, everybody goes through it. Everybody who you think's driving that Lamborghini private planes, listen, these cunts struggle just as much as well. Fuck from the whole, right. everybody fucking struggles. I'd, but the amount of people I interview now understand that. Like, nobody's got it figured out we haven't got a fucking clue what's going on on this planet no. everyone's struggling T1 there's an actor and he mm. I was struggling and he went go and sign on I said what's he sign on he said yeah go and sign on would you sign on he went yeah I do I said why don't you get a fucking job he said I'm an actor I've got too much of a reputation so the bottom of the line is he was too worried about pleasing everybody else on the social media to go and get a fucking job. And he was signing on because he's waiting for his next job to come in. It's like now I'm working every day, training in the mornings, working in the afternoon, training in the evening. And if an acting job comes up, I'll move them jobs to the weekend and I'll work Saturday and Sunday to cover that. You know, never be too proud to work. Never be too proud to be real. I always say, be real, be true, be you. It's my famous saying, and we've all got bills to pay. We've all got food to put on the table. Listen, unless you unless you've cracked it, like that, my laughs. Lucky bastard. <laughs> 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 no, unless you've cracked it, then good luck, chat. But if you ain't cracked it, don't fake it to try and make it, because you'll end up losing everything and you'll be struggling and you'll cause yourself mental health problems. Go and get a fucking job, not like everyone else. This is that simple. Where do you see yourself in five years, Chance? Five years' time, I see myself. I'll be sad to go, but it ain't the same on my uh, estate no more. Council estate is shot to bits. If it was still the old school, but they've all gone. I'm the only one left now, so I want to get out. Um, probably moving Essex. I'll have a successful business. And hopefully, touch wood, I would have got recognised in the film game and crack on with my films. That's what I want to be an actor. And... Um, I'm going to carry on. I'd never change. I'll always have my social media and I'll always reply to each and every one of my followers. I do it all night. My missus goes mad. I sit there for three, four hours a night just speaking to everyone because all these people, it's, it's, it's so hard for when you've got big following to try and get back to everyone and I sit there for hours. It does it does kill me. Um, I just, I just, well, I'm just, well, I'm just, I'm just real. I really am and I've come from nothing. And I've had nothing, and I want better. And I've gone through drugs, and I've gone through mental health, and I still ain't where I'm at, and I still struggle now. But what I'm trying, I want to push out there is to everyone: if I can fucking do it, I'm a clown. You lot can do it. You know, mental health. Please go and talk to someone. It's okay not to be okay. 
reach out. Pick yeah. up the fucking phone. For anybody that's watching, a lot of people try and watch, well, a lot of people watch and listen to these podcasts for inspiration, for a bit of, just that's something to give them the kick up the ass. Like, no matter who you are or where you're working, like you can always make improvements. It ain't fucking easy, but it, I, I, I fucking, I preach this shit consistently because I don't know if we've got new listeners or people listening enough and keep hearing that they can understand that you can make those changes. I get messages every day, people in the pack at the booze in debt. The only country can change it is you. Is you? No one can do you. it for you. For anybody that's watching, it's maybe stuck in that struggle. They know, Chaz. What advice would you have for them? <laughs> You've just hit the nail on the head. Listen, only you can change. Only you can want better. You, you know, you got to look at your life, and it sounds horrible. And you got to look at your life, and are you happy? Are you content in that life? Going out every Friday. Sniffing cocaine, drinking beer. On a Monday, you're asking your boss for a sub because you spent all your fucking wages. All your missus is doing you nothing. You, don't you want to three to four years time? Look where you want to be. So take a second and just have a little thought to yourself. Where do I want to be in three, four years time? My daughter on nice beach. My daughter in Disneyland. You know, my boy... It's just, and I don't mean to go on a brag, but I've been there and I never felt I was going forward and I was quite content in my own little life until it took over. And then I just thought, where am I going? I didn't want to be here. And that's a massive thing out there where people, you get to that certain stage where you don't want to be here. I don't, I don't mean to like, get upset but I've been there and it does it does really get on where you're just doing the same things I just want people to listen you're doing the same thing the same weekend you know pinch yourself where do you want to fucking be do you want do you because you, you're going to end up one place and that's going to be in a fucking box or you're not going to be able to see your kid and you're going to be in a fucking drug flat you know seeing your kid in a contact center or something like that so just get hold of yourself and tell yourself I, i'm all right i'm pinching a couple of bits of gear at the weekend it's no harm all right but in two years time when you look back you're going to say he was fucking right when you've done that podcast with james because i don't want to be here no more i don't want people to go through that like i went through i'm passionate i don't want people to do what i've done so please just listen and be a man and don't laugh. Be a man and go, do you know what? Now, fucking right. I'm sorting myself out. Fuck this. I'm arguing with her all weekend because I've cracked on on a Friday. You know, life shit. So just get hold of yourself, please. And don't, don't ever be afraid to pick up the phone. Even my phone's always on my message. Um, and yeah, there's someone to listen. I'll listen. Just don't wait till it's too late. No. Where can people get tickets for your fight, Chaz? What's all your social medias as well for people to contact you in case they want to reach out and just ask you a couple of questions? I'm always there. Um, Chaz, a real talk on Instagram. <laughs> Same as Snapchat, but Instagram's the main one. Chaz, a real talk on all platforms. This, uh, the tickets are there. If you want to come, it's at Wembley Arena, 20th of August. It's my last fight. I'm going out of a bang. BKFC, the Americans. It's the big stage. I've made it to the top. There's nowhere else for me to go. I'm getting old. I've conquered it. I'm going to leave it all on the ring. I'm going all in. Whether I wake up in hospital or I survive, it's going to be a fight. Do you think you'll retire after this, Chaz? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Okay, mate. And, uh, would you like to finish up on anything, brother? Just want to thank you for having me on the show, mate. Always been a big fan. Always watch your podcast. They've always helped me as well, buddy. Um, just want to thank all my little, my little lot around me, all my sponsors, um, all my pals, Tom, Lee, Dapa. Um, I can go on. I can go on. I can't see her on this your podcast, but listen, all my sponsors, thank you so much, and I love you all. But for coming on today and telling your story, brother, thank you. Thank you so you much. You clearly wear your hat in your sleeve, man, and you've got a long way to go in life, brother. And I can assure you, the best days of your life are ahead of you, mate. So you've just got to keep hustling, keep pushing. You win your fight in August, mate, and then kick on with your business. But anything I can ever help with, mate, I'm a phone call or a message away as well. Thank you so much, God James. You, it's been brother. a pleasure. Thank well, you, mate.